Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I DIY'd a sweatshirt quilt. So the main motivation behind this quilt was because these are kind of sentimental sweatshirts but they have zero resale value. I had no intention of ever wearing these sweatshirts again honestly. Um, they were kind of cute and sentimental but I just wasn't going to wear them for all different reasons. At the same time I didn't want to recycle them because they probably wouldn't get recycled. So, between the kind of sentimental and the not going to do anything else in its lifetime as a garment, I decided to make it into a sweatshirt quilt. I had seen things like this before on Pinterest and I had absolutely no experience in quilting. So, was this my best decision? No. But it honestly turned out just fine, as you'll see at the end. So, I recorded clips throughout the whole process because it took weeks and weeks, it actually took months because I wasn't working on it the whole time and again I had no idea what I was doing. I think I'm going to put an I don't know what I'm doing count on screen or at the end because I said that a lot. So we'll go right from the beginning and I'll show you the whole process of making the quilt. Hello, this is so weird holding this camera. About to start stage one of the t-shirt or the sweatshirt quilt. I've collected how many? One, two, three, four, five. Five sweatshirts. I might have a sixth, but I'm not really sure if I want to cut it apart. We'll see how it goes. Um, right now, I'm not cutting squares because I think I'm going to cut different size ones, not to be like cute and funky, but because there's some things I don't want to cut through necessarily, and I think it might work out better that way. So first thing I'm going to do is deconstruct all of them so I'm able to lay everything flat. So I'm going to be using this handy dandy ancient <laughs> stitch ripper as well as this one that I think my mum got in Singapore. We lived there like 10, 12 years ago. So just gonna watch some YouTube and try and deconstruct these sweatshirts. <laughs> to start cutting into this one and it's gonna hurt my heart so much like obviously I'm not getting rid of it that's why like I'm, I'm doing this uh, but I'm gonna have like this uh, massive UCD dance sock UCD dance sock so I'm gonna try and keep like both of these um, but I have th I, this is like my only dance sweatshirt from the team I was on this is my second year one so my first year one suit their other two are both maroon and to be honest like no offense to the people who pick these I know who pick them uh, the gray is like ugly and it's not as comfortable as the other ones it's like more fitted so mm -mm. but it's still gonna hurt my heart a little bit uh also this rotary cutter is a game changer it's amazing so day two of attempting to quilt uh i have all the, like important pieces if you know what i mean in this pile uh hoodies and pockets and sleeves in these ones so what i've decided to do first is to there's my dog that's the noise that you can hear. She's a little old, so she's a little schnuffly. Um, is to cut all the important parts from these. So I will show you that when I'm done. But like, for example, this crest, the back of this has a big thing that says in a shear. This, I have two of those, etc., etc. So let's hope this goes well. Okay, update time. I don't know the last time I updated, but basically I've just been cutting squares. They're all different size squares, but cutting squares for Le Quilt. I'm down in a different room in my house now. So basically what I've decided to do, as I said, I have zero idea what I'm doing. So I have the vision. Um, you can see all the scraps there. Thank God for a rotary cutter. But what I'm doing now, let me flip you around. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm kind of blocking sections and mathematically things don't necessarily 100% make sense for some of the other pieces. So what I'm going to be doing is there are certain pieces like this and this that I want to keep in close proximity to each other and like these. So like I've done here, as I, you can see there aren't any maroon pieces and I'm just going to pin them together provisionally to see how it looks. Really, also we've decided that I'm going to do the Sherpa side out and use the other fleecy side in the inside. And I will be like quilting stitching over this, so hopefully that'll help, just not over the ones with printed text. But yeah, that is what we are doing now. So I'm making little sections, 
and I'm gonna start pinning them to one another. And then once that's done, I have those sections and I lay them out where I want them. There will be sections left to fill and thankfully I still have plenty of fabric left to do that when I need to. No joke, it's like a month later, um, but I'm finally working on the quilt again. So today I just, like this evening, you can see I just filled in the little gaps that I was working on and I'm going to start to sew this evening. So I have a lot of them pinned, but I'm gonna kind of do it in sections and strips because it's all super unevenly sized and whatever. So I think I'm gonna do this section here first. So from these two across, and then I'm gonna work on this strip and attaching it to this piece and kind of work my way that way. Hoping I can get the sewing machine to work because sewing machines are always little bitches. Tell me if I'm right. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna get this thing done finally because it's literally been sitting here in the floor of this room in my house for over a month. So like, sorry family. <laughs> So it's like two, yeah, two-ish hours later. And we are working. We've obviously moved to a different room. Um, it's actually getting kind of late, so I'm probably just gonna do one more piece for today. But I'll show you what I have done so far. So I have this strip here done, and then this panel up until this cat's thing here. So the last thing I'm gonna do is actually join this section to here and then as you can see i have like pressed it already um so the seams were laying flat this was the next thing i was going to do but i think i'm going to work on this just for now and then maybe pin some more sections for tomorrow to make it a little easier happy saturday today i'm hoping to get the whole thing sewn together stressful probably but very doable because it wasn't it did not take me that long yesterday at all so right now i just have my like photo reference and youtube to entertain me and i'm just gonna pin as much as i can i also brought back out the rotary cutter so that i can trim down all the scrap pieces um so that it's just a little less confusing to sew once i have to because I have a lot of little like pieces to fill gaps and stuff. So we're gonna work on that and I will update you once everything is pinned. The face of a broken woman. I did it. It is extremely wonky. Obviously it's not lying totally flat. I haven't pressed it. There's loads of stuff that needs to be cut. This whole section, just forget about it. That section, forget about it. It's even at the top at the bottom the sides are not totally fine but it is sewn let this be your warning don't do it been at this for hours hours and i'm gonna trim all the back all the freaking threads and all the extra piece of fabric and then i'm gonna press it we'll get there eventually once again, many, many days later, I'm back again at the quilt. So I don't know the last time I updated you. I'll give you a better shot of it uh, in a second. But the whole thing is stitched together. Um, it was a bit of an ordeal. I think I finished, like I kind of stopped filming because there was a whole like, there's a situation. Um, so it's really uneven, but I also really don't care. Um, I'm also blonder now. My hair is a lot shorter. That's another situation. But right now, sorry also about the rain. It's Ireland, it's August. So of course it's pouring rain. Um, I'm going to be rolling in the edges, which I'll show you in a second. And I'm gonna be sewing that up today. Um, I really just wanna get this done because there's other projects I want to work on. So I'm gonna do a little time-lapse of me pinning the edges, kind of rolling in and pinning the edges. Um, seeing if I need to cut anything down a small bit and then I'm gonna be sewing that and then I will work on the whole like actually like kind of more quilty thing you know like 
sewn it across. I, again, I have no idea what I'm doing, but we're gonna get somewhere, so it's all good. Okay, so it's not a, uh, it's not flat right now because I was just pinning stuff, but you can see that's what the edges are gonna look like. I kind of worked on the corner. We're a little wobbly there, but we're just gonna sew it because it's so hard to pin that fabric. And I also stuck a needle or a pin, sorry, uh, right into my finger. So I'm gonna take a break from pinning and I'm gonna go on the machine and work and do these two sides. And then hopefully that'll give me a bit more um, tension so that I can have it nice and flat across the other two sides. So it's machine time. Woohoo! The edges are done. Um, that was uh, stressful. So yeah, the quilt's really uneven. It's like really wonky and whatever. Um, don't really care. So I'm going to take, I have like a quilting attachment for this machine uh, that we never opened. It just happened to be the weekend that we got this machine. There was some um, brother were doing some promotion where you'd get the quilting kit worth like 120 euro free. So we were like, okay. Um, just coincidentally. So I'm gonna take that out and try and figure that out. And I'm just gonna keep going. I'm just gonna plow through because I really wanna get this done today. So the little quilting table attachment, super easy to attach. Just flick out these legs and kind of slot it in, taking out the piece that usually holds your bobbin and stuff uh, in other machines. But this one, it's, you access it from the top. I wasn't sure like, how I was gonna figure out the whole presser foot situation and stuff like that. And I've decided I'm just not going to. Um, I'm going to set a pretty long stitch length, I think. And I'm just gonna, I don't even know, go for it. Um, first of all, I am going to lay out the quilt flat as much as I can and then pin in the areas slash directions I want to quilt. And well, quilt, that's not the word for it stitch across i don't know but this set comes with a thing for free motion quilting but i'm really not so sure how that works and i don't think that's gonna be maybe the best decision for right now so honestly we'll see how it goes maybe we will end up that way but first of all i am going to kind of flatten this out more get all the crinkles out and then you can see my dog's blanket drying on top of that thing and then um kind of figure out where i'm gonna stitch because there are some like embroidered logos and stuff that I'm not gonna sew over. Kind of I didn't I didn't necessarily but it's not looking so hot. So I am using white thread for the whole like doing lines across. I again in case I haven't said this enough, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I kind of just I'll show you I just kind of did it one big line of very wonky stitches across the whole blanket. Um, and I, I know how I'm gonna space them. Um, and I'm gonna keep them quite spaced out. And I've kind of figured how I'm skipping over the embroidered patches. But yeah, it looks hot mess, honestly. Um, I'm hoping I'll be able to like tidy it up afterwards with less scissors. I'm just gonna cut the little spaces so I can see if it's okay. And yeah, it's not looking so cute, but it's also fine. As I said before, it's just a car blanket. It's just kind of a way to preserve these things. I didn't want to throw them out and it's only me that's gonna be using it. So I will show you what it looks like and like trimming a little bit. So this section here is definitely the worst because you can see how uneven it is. But basically this is not, I have um, like back stitches here and here and I can tuck those in. So that's actually, oh, sorry, you missed that. So it's actually just skipped over this section because obviously I'm not going to um, embroider over that. And then this, um, these are also both backstitched in place. Um, again, just skipping over that. And then there's another one over here over the Mamma Mia. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see that they're backstitched in there. So they're secure for me to cut them. And like that. So like that part looks fine. And that was actually the one I did first. The reason it's, I think it's more of a problem over the other side is that it, the whole other side is kind of a problem. So I think I'm gonna do the other diagonal first. So then I can kind of see, cause that's like a complicated path. And then there's lots of little threads that need to be 
uh, tucked in, woven in. I don't know what you say for sewing, a more of a crocheter. So you can see what it's gonna look like. It's honestly, it is just to keep it a bit more secured to the backing. Um, that's the only reason I'm doing it because there's no real batting in here because it's a thick fleecy blanket because this was a blanket I had in my house. I was not actually going to be buying any supplies for this. Um, it was just like giving it a go. It's just the white looks really bad on the black, but I think it'll be fine once it's done because it does have like the off-white fleece. So I think I'm gonna do a right angle now that I'm thinking of it. I can use this thing for my brothers when he did, um, whatchamacallit, whatever you call it, woodwork or something. So um, in school, so maybe I'll use that. So then it's they're like squares. I think I'll do that instead and I'll start over that end where the lines are actually straight and not wonky. It also looks more wonky because these are kind of bubbling up a small bit because again, this quote was not cut evenly. I can't remember what I said last, but I think I've like abandoned ship on that. Uh, I've decided to mark out with chalk the, so I did my first row and then I use something to get a right angle on one of the corners and now I have kind of certain thing that I'm using to space them out so they're evenly spaced. Again, not being very exact and I think I figured out what freehand quilting is but again, don't know what I'm doing. So I've marked out with chalk some lines that I'm gonna do right now and then once they're done, I just keep going and keep repeating the same process until hopefully the whole thing is like sewn together. So that is my completed sweatshirt quilt. I ended up not stitching lines across it, as you'll probably tell. I don't know if I addressed that in the clips because I lost my damn mind. So I decided not to do that. I left some of the corners that were cute and intact and whatever. So I just left them. And then I washed it and I just kind of pressed it a little bit and it's good to go. Hopefully from watching this video, you can learn from my mistakes. Uh, I think it did turn out really cute, but obviously it's super, super, lopsided if you can see that whole section but it's still something really cute I'm just going to be using it as like a blanket to have on the back of my car but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out all in all um it didn't take as much fabric as I assumed it would and I would probably do it again and I would just know what I was doing this time uh I think I figured out methods and I'm sure people who actually quilt are looking at this video screaming but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out honestly it's better than these things going to landfill waste so I hope you enjoyed this video hope you find it kind of helpful um maybe try out your own sweatshirt quilt or t-shirt quilt I'm definitely going to be doing more like textile recycling DIYs um I'm currently working on another one so subscribe for more of that kind of content this isn't my necessarily my typical content but you can see all the other things I have on this channel if you enjoyed subscribe follow me on instagram at anime.yt and I will see you in my next video